Uh, here we go again. So I um, was wanting to leave these guys alone because, well, they're insanely insignificant and just a bunch of awful weirdos uh, that I think want to turn the clock back to the 1950s. Um, I even deleted some of the old videos I did about them because it's just, it's just so pointless, right? But they trigger me. They trigger me badly. So this is a video where the Scottish family party are trying to explain to you what you <laughs> what you can expect if you want to become like a party member candidate thing. And it's genius. It's absolutely horrific um, that we have people in today's society that still think this way. Anyway, let's have some lessons because this is class. Well, we want to be honest and open with you in helping you to decide whether or not to be a candidate for the Scottish Family Party. So I'm going to talk in this video a little bit about what you might be letting yourself in for. You might find it and it were nothing. None of these things come to fruition, but these are just some possibilities that you might like to. I suppose uh, my first thought is that probably what uh, you can expect is that you are going to become homophobic, maybe a little bit racist. Um, generally maybe a bit misogynistic all these kind of classic old things but let's see to consider in making your decision right if you announce to your family that you're intending to be a candidate for the Scottish family party you might find that some of them are uh, unhappy we've had situations where uh, candidates or people involved in the family party have had very strong opposition from their children from their I truly hope so parents from their brothers and sisters and in some cases that can be quite extreme almost you know threatening if you go ahead and do this then whatever i mean my uh, advice in that sort of situation would be to not back down in the face of pressure from family members it's not right that they should try and control what you do and i would worry that if you submit to it once you might find yourself submitting to it again and again and so I'm all for doing what you think is right and doing what you want and not listening to other people. Getting advice, obviously, is a different story. You should always listen. However, you should never replace, you know, one person telling you what to do for another, which is probably what's going to happen if you <laughs> become a candidate here. Because they don't have a lot of wiggle room from what I can see with their, you know, manifestos. And again, so I would probably urge you to take quite a firm line where family members uh, are not happy with you being involved in the uh, Scottish Family Party, but that's an issue that may uh, arise. It's like cancel culture within families sometimes. Now, there's one family member I think is in a different category, and that is a spouse, a husband or a wife. Now, I think being a candidate, realistically, you really need to have the agreement of your husband or wife, uh, if you're married, to go forward and be a Scottish Family Party candidate. I must admit, I'm truly surprised that he's actually saying that you should actually ask your wife. <laughs> this doesn't seem like them, but okay. To be any sort of candidate, really, because it is something uh, that's quite an important thing. It's quite a public thing, and it will have an impact on, on uh, your husband and wife as well. So I think you need to talk things through and reach agreement uh, on that. Friends and colleagues, you might find a lot of friends and colleagues are very interested, very supportive, but you might find some as well react very negatively, sometimes in a way that you would never have imagined. I mean, it's not impossible that some people you know, might barely speak to you once they realize that you're involved in the, uh, in the Scottish Family Party. I can't say that's happened very often at all. I haven't heard many stories of that. Uh, but it it's only because they don't know about you, which is really a good thing, but okay. It, it's a possibility, it's something you might need to consider. You only find out how, uh, how strong people's views are, in some cases how bitter they are as well, and how hostile they are to people who take a different view to them when you actually stand up for what you believe in. So, so you might find there's some sort of pushback, some sort of coldness from people who are otherwise uh, more friendly and warmer. Uh, your employer. I mean, some people worry, you know, if they stand as a candidate for the Scottish Family Party, they'll, you know, they'll lose their job. I mean, that, that's basically not going to happen. Very, very, very uh, unlikely. Uh, I think some... Maybe I shouldn't say this, but if I ran a business and I employed somebody and I learned that they are not just voting for the 
Scottish Family Party, but possibly even a candidate or wannabe candidate, it would clearly indicate to me uh, what kind of um, backward person that is to believe in anything that these guys propose. And therefore, I would not trust him in my business, uh, competence-wise, intelligence-wise, you name it. So yeah, I would probably ask him to um, pack his shit. And that is not a case of, okay, I don't like that party and I don't agree with that party. To me, it's very simple. I think, I think people forget this, that if somebody has a certain belief in something, it also means that there is a person, per, uh, uh, it's a, you know, a, a type of personality trait that, per, and, and, and for example, the Scottish family party, if you look at the stuff that they propose, um, they seem, it, it's very kind of like, seem to be this um, ideology of making our society better, but actually the ways that they want to do it, in my opinion, is extremely backward, um, has no place in modern society anymore, and is also unreasonable. Um, and so if you believe in something that is unreasonable or illogical, that also means, well, what else are you going to think is, you know, ha that person, what other things would are in their head that are just like weird? Um, and is that a problem with, you know, brain power, um, re reasoning, etc. And to be fair, in a business, you need the best people you can, <laughs> you know, you need proactive, intelligent, hardworking people basically sometimes with uh, an employer what what happens is the employer it's like they haven't got a mind of their own but if they receive a complaint then they're like oh no no what do i do oh panic 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 i don't know oh, oh i better get the person and, and tell them not to do it that, that, that's the easiest way to do it but often i mean they haven't got a leg to stand the reason that's the easiest way to do is because depending on the kind of things and the kind of policies that are included, they might actually be acting against the law. What I mean by that is the employee doesn't want somebody in their workforce that can embarrass them because that might ultimately affect the business and therefore also the other employees which they need to pay. So it is not that simple. Um, so I, I, to a degree, agree here. Like employers can be very quick to just jump on the woke bandwagon um, but having run a business before and being having been an employer employ in, in employment before um, you can kind of understand some of these decisions it is not necessarily a fear um, or oh look the, the, the person thinks differently for me it is a lot of times a protection of the business um, it's right or wrong, I don't know. But I do know that these kind of decisions are not always, you know, just, oh, you know, I don't like the way he thinks, so I don't want him in my business. There is also a reasonable attempt to keep the business safe. Um, discrimination in this in the workplace in this case is, is, I would say, case by case. You can't discriminate on people on their beliefs or thoughts or stuff like that but there is also this element where you have to make sure that that doesn't impact your business negatively uh so i don't know tricky one and on well that's the thing we stand in for election for a registered political party i'm an employer basically has to allow it. unless there's some specific reason then there shouldn't be you know and clearly stated reason then that shouldn't be a problem but do bear that in mind i mean some employers might regard that as you know embarrassing that you're standing for the scotty family party maybe some future employer might do the google search on you might see that and think oh not sure about that maybe i prefer a candidate who is a bit more bland and didn't have any any uh you know history of expressing any views on anything whatsoever it's a possibility it's a possibility to bear in mind our professional bodies some people, uh, when they're candidates, they fear they'll be struck off by their professional body or land in some sort of trouble with their professional body. I say that has never happened with the Scottish family. Anyway, I'm bored.
I, I can't stand these people. Um, I really hope nobody wants to be a candidate for them because it would be a blind on our society.